Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the latest Meet the Brand webinar series. Um, this is probably the third or fourth we've done of these now. We've got close to 100 partners across the platform. Some of them are huge industry names. Some of them are smaller, sort of unique individual suppliers. Um, so we're trying to essentially provide a little bit of an introduction to each of the partners that we work with. Um, so you can get a better feel for them and whether they're right for your business. Membership software is something that always comes up. Um, we have five membership providers um, that we work with, membership software providers. So it made sense to do a couple of days where we look at each of the brands and how they can help you in your business. So the first up is um, Member. Member is founded by Jack Malin, who's on the call with us today, uh, and Marcus Eaton as well, who's their um, business development manager, I believe. Perhaps a slightly different title. So on that note, I'm going to hand over to Jack. Jack's going to explain a little bit more about what, what the guys do and, the, and how they can how they can help you. So on that note, over to you, Jack. Thanks very much, mate. Yeah, I'm going to give a quick sort of 10 minutes about the overview of the business and then hand over to Marcus to do a quick quick jump into the product, not at any level, but just give you a little bit of an, an overview of the kind of the key functionality. Um, so our background and how we got is it's probably very different to some of our competitors. Um, back in, in 2012, I uh, left university and was a... Um, was a personal trainer, worked freelance PT on the gym floor and I own, owned a studio and quite quickly reached the point where um, where I couldn't try and take, take any more customers on, couldn't um, couldn't grow my business and had an idea at the time of, of building a piece of software um, where I could send training programs, send meal plans to people, help them get fit with, without without necessarily having to stand next to them and exchange my time for, for money. Um, so that's what that's what is that all it was ever meant to be really the idea was it was a piece of software I wanted to build for for me as a trainer that could help me scale my business and mean I could actually go on holiday and uh, and still earn some money and uh, and scale from where I was so I got introduced to a guy called Dave um, who ended up being a co-founder still um, with us today as chief product officer um, and he said oh, I can build that for you take us about six weeks and, and off and off we go so that, like I said, that was all it was ever meant to be. It was meant to be a piece of software for me as a PT and was going to grow my business. Um, in 20, a year into that, kind of after I was using it with my clients, Dave came back to me and said, look, you can't possibly be the only trainer that's got this problem. Why don't um, why don't we go into business together? I'll build it, you sell it, we'll sell it to other trainers and, and off we go. So um, we built a product called PT Cloud, which just just built on top of what we had for, for me as a trainer. Um, and if you think we're at 2013 here, that it was... It was almost a bit wacky and, and out there at the time. PTs were still trained to um, on the courses for everything is going to be how you how you correct technique, how you communicate with people on the gym floor. It was all about gym floor and face to face contact. And we were then trying to explain to people that you could um, you could deliver an element of that um, remotely. So the idea didn't really resonate with trainers at the time, um, as a lot of PTs had the problem back then. Was more kind of how they could fill their diaries and how they could. Be, become full not how they could scale past being full um and it, i was still peating full-time dave was still working full-time so it was very much kind of a, a bit of a, a hobby and um, we then started trying to rather than selling to self-employed pts tried to sort of change who we who we stole to and tried to sign up the, the gyms and at, at that point we started to get a little bit of traction and probably back in the 2013 we we're at the point where um the low cost sector was, was taking off and um, gyms were looking at how they could support their members without face-to-face -face contact because they couldn't afford to have gym instructors on the gym floor the, the business model didn't didn't really make sense um, and it was that was when we first started to get a bit of traction with, with gyms and the pitch to them was if your trainers use the use the product they'll be able to sign up more than the four percent of people that take pt on average um and uh, that'll have a positive effect on on uh, on your retention so at, at that stage a couple of gyms came back to us and said look we 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 love the idea of the concept, but don't want the trainer to have the relationship. So we, we evolved the product to be focused on the gym, integrate, started integrating into the management systems on the market. Um, but it was very much a, a fitness product at, at that stage. Um, and then kind of going into 2014, we decided that we had a decision to make whether we carried on integrating into all the management systems that were on the market or built out what we had so we could replace the management system. And, and we went with the latter. And I guess it's kind of 2014 somewhere between those two little dots is, is where it became um a proper business in inverted commas and me and dave went into it, it went into it full time started raising capital and um i went i went from there so we rebranded as member um we were lucky enough to sign anytime fitness uh, initially across um just uh holland it ended up being 21 countries across the world the latest one we just finished is, is japan and uh, we signed a global partnership with, with life fitness and um, took some, an equity investment from them and um, did a joint venture with the Halo Halo solution and also integrated into our member management product. 
And then the last couple of years, as I won't go into, <laughs> into any level of detail, it's terribly boring. It's been much more about kind of focusing on, on supporting people. Not boring, that's the, terrible, <laughs> the wrong word. Um, 100 miles an hour, but not necessarily a good way of supporting people through COVID. So building out functionality globally that allows for the different laws and regulations in, di in different countries for when gyms when gyms are reopening. So a um, probably a very different background to to many of the gym software products on the market, but I think that's that's where we try and position ourselves now. We're we're very much a fitness company. We're still ran by a PT. <laughs> We've just been able to be in a position where we understand the health and fitness market. We understand running gyms. Me and Dave owned a gym at, um, throughout that process. Many of our staff have worked in gyms. It's we're very much a fitness company that sells software rather rather than the uh, the other way around. Rather than the um, tech company. Yeah, exactly. And and and. It's, it's obviously both now we have to scale out the teams have to bring in people that's that have been in various scaling tech companies but we understand health and fitness we're never moving away from that we're never going to start selling our product to um golf um golf clubs for example which i guess in principle are the same you book things you pay for things you, you set up payments on a recurring basis but we'll never evolve our business to be that is for us it's about pairing healthier businesses and that's making them more profitable but focusing on on companies that want to make people healthy so um in terms of where we are today head office in manchester um pre-covid the vast majority of, of staff are based in manchester we, we have spread a little bit more geographically from now and uh, we have distributed in south africa an office in the us and um an office in in tokyo and um, strangely tokyo just supports japan and um, the rest of the asian markets are supported uh, from manchester through through the night so um around 2000 clubs now um Biggest ones being kind of um, Anytime Fitness, Life Fitness, JD Gyms, Exercise for Less, Simple Gyms, well, quite a lot of the low cost sector in, in the UK. Um, and yeah, it's about 23 countries now. So about 50 50 of our businesses spread across Europe and, and, and Asia. Um, in terms of our motivation, what we do on a day to day basis, it's about fanatically helping the fitness industry smash their goals. Like it's, it is about working with gyms to try and make themselves successful. It's, it's not just about putting a piece of software in and expecting it to, to change the world. And I think anyone that does that's being a little bit, a little bit naive. It's about how we can support you make progress with the product that we, that we put in. And it's about building the world's, the world's greatest fitness membership platform. So it's, it's about fitness. It's about memberships. It's, it's not a, um, it's not a kind of booking system. It's not like some Canvey or anything like that. It's about built helping, um, helping gym operators, um, to build fitness businesses that are membership, membership focused. Um, in terms of who we are, we're kind of the people that our customers would deal with on a day to day basis. We, we, we when we, um, when we onboard customers, they're handed over to uh, our customer success team, which is split between, uh, onboarding training and support. Um, and then we have uh, Craig McNeil heads up digital fitness for us that's involved in kind of coaching sessions to, to help specifically on the on the fitness part of the product. Um, we're around 16 employees now. Um, like I said, primarily about 50 of those are based in, in Europe, uh, 10, uh, 10 in Tokyo. Um, and the goal is ultimately to build happy customers. It is about is about a kind of full service solution. It's not just about a piece of software licensing it and cheap and getting it off and putting it into the gym. It's about supporting you and growing a, a healthier a healthier business um, and we do that through a sort of membership success flow so we have um we have a process that where marcus is um is head of direct sales so he'd be responsible for aligning kind of us with um with the right type of gym making sure it is the, is the right type of gym for member and um, not all not all health and fitness software is, is the same and um you've got probably three main areas where some products will focus on gyms some will focus on leisure centers some will focus on on studios and probably not what one product doesn't do all three of those very well. So the, the focus for us is, first of all, is finding out that it's the right fit for us and for you. Um, otherwise, you, you end up just pushing the, the, the problem down the road and that's that's what Marcus is responsible for. And then it's about, um, he'll hand uh, hand the customer over to um, to the success manager in the UK, assuming it's a UK sale, and then they will take you through a initial 12 week success program and then and then, and then um, periodic check-ins. Um, like I said, it's not just about telling you this button does that and that button does that it's about understanding from the customer's perspective why they purchased us what the um, what the areas they um that we can uh, provide value to, the, to them as an operator and then help them get value out of, out of the product um so some of the customers we, we work with and some of the kind of um move you up there rob so that uh, i can i can read it um, some of the kind of customers we work with in the uk um is one for example here is, is jd gyms we, we've moved them 
uh, we've moved them over uh, to QR code access recently, which has been really, I say recently, post COVID, which has been been really successful. It's kind of our go-to access control option now. Um, obviously, when the, the local sector kicked off, it was all about pin entry. Um, users got savvy, pin pin abuse kind of uh, accelerated, and, and QR code has been a really good way of not necessarily totally negating um, pin abuse, but but making a really big dent in it. Um, Excess for less, so um, owned by JD Gyms now. Only a small amount of those um, remaining. Uh, work with those guys. Um, Gym Works. Um, so we uh, we work with Gym Works up in uh, up in the northwest. Peter and his team, and one of the big reasons the drivers they bought horses originally it was quite a few years ago was around kind of automating their marketing. So when prospects are added, going through automated flows that um, that essentially help him drive his sales process without having um, without having to have a big sales team, a kind of untraditional, which is kind of not traditional for the local sector. Um, and then our, and then our, our ex gyms um, in based uh, near us in Manchester, which was kind of a, actually our first ever uh, member customer, Patrick, um, who is, is still with us with us today. And that was about kind of consolidating a lot of processes he had. A lot of it was pen and paper, a lot of it was spreadsheets and um, a kind of uh, entry level piece of software. And we were able to consolidate that into into one platform where. He can do everything from his billing to his access control to also his, his fitness app and he's the king crossfitter and doing kind of workouts of the day that he could pass out to people and stuff like that. So um quite an that's kind of a bit of an overview, I guess, as to, as to what we what we do and I guess why we're, we're slightly different. We're, as I said earlier in the call, that we very much see ourselves as a as a fitness company itself, software, not not the other way around. And that kind of feeds into everything we do as an organization culturally, but then also as a from a product perspective as well. So I'm just scribbling this stuff down now, and I don't know whether Marcus is going to jump in and share his screen and probably answer a lot of my questions. And there's some of the things I don't use mentioned software day to day, but I hear about some of the obviously the, the questions and the issues and everything that people ask about. So there's sort of five things I've just put down there really. Access, which I think you, you hinted at. I think it's changed from PIN numbers, is like you say, from a from a security and also clamping down on sharing of pins but also in a covid world nobody wanted to touch anything so this qr code came in so is qr code the only way you use or is it do you have different options depending yeah, on yeah so, so we do have many different options we've got fingerprint qr code pins traditional cards rfid wristbands i think there's many benefits i guess of of, of app access you don't have to have a physical device and for 24 hour gyms um low cost gyms in many respect in many instances you, you might sign up and then this is why PIN was, was great at the start. You sign up, you get a PIN code, you can go straight into the gym. So you're not reliant on meeting meeting someone. Um, QR code is the same in that respect. You can sign up, get an email, download the app, and, and then you go. So it has kind of some advantages there over, over traditional membership cards or, or wristbands. Um, fingerprint is is definitely the most secure way of, of getting in, and we've got an option for, for that. But it comes with, um, I guess, in a post-COVID world, cleanliness and people putting their fingerprints on the people who are yeah. concerned about that. Um, but in a, in a normalised world, whatever that is now, um, we you also have the, the fact that it, it's quite awkward to, to get people registered. So you've got to register your finger, you've got to hold in the right position. This will sound crazy, but one week someone will come in with the right hand, and the next week they'll come in with the left hand, and they won't be able to understand why the, 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 the yeah. fingerprint doesn't, doesn't work. Um, so we found kind of QR access, and we've done some stuff to make it as, as secure as possible. So you can't share it, you can't screenshot it, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, it's probably a balance somewhere between pin code that is really, really easy to use, um, but very, um, very unsecure, through to fingerprint that is the most secure way of getting an entry, but operationally quite a hard work. QR code sits somewhere in the middle, and I guess it also means that you're getting more people onto the app, so you're getting more people using the functionality you want them to use, like downloading workouts, booking classes, mm. kind of teasing them into the app. Um, because they they download it in the first place to, to gain access to control. So we've seen a massive, obviously we've seen a massive uptake in users because you have to use it as your membership card, but yeah. um, but also an uptake in um, in a additional functionality that is guess is kind of would have been traditionally nice to nice to have functionality. Yeah, nice. No, I agree. We're in all those points. Um, Marcus, do you want to do a run through of the system? And then I'll ask the questions after. Yeah, absolutely. No problem at all. Yeah. I'm just gonna. Yeah, quick say overview. Because, because in true uh, live fashion, my dog has just arrived from his dog walk and he's about to go crazy. So I'm going to hand yeah. over to you and I'll pick up the baton at the end. No problems, no problems. <laughs> I'll just share my screen. 
You've got a, do- a dog that walks itself, Rob. I wish, I wish. <laughs> but that posture of a dog walker. <laughs> there we go, right, I'm going to mute. Yeah. Well, okay, just trying it. to share. We almost had it. it. It does this sometimes to me. These live demos, eh? Are you with me now? We can see your face. I can't see your screen. Yes, then. Bear with me for two secs. We'll use the editing technology to uh, this out. sort this. <laughs> I don't understand why on Zoom it mutes me when I share my screen. It doesn't do oh, this I was doing this the other day, wasn't it? it? doesn't do this on any other platform. But I'm going to join off my phone so we can use the audio. And then just give me two seconds. I'm going to test Rob's uh, video editing skills. <laughs> Right, so I should be joining. Should be able to let me in here, Rob, so I can join twice. Okay, so can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So, if I now share on here. Here we go. Just trying yeah. anyway, it's local. Yeah, it should be coming up now. Yeah, there we go. Right, you're with me and you can hear me. And Hello? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. All right, brilliant, cool. Sorry about that, guys. We'll uh, we'll get that sorted. So, just to give a, a very very sort of high level, let's call it, overview of the member product. We're not going to sit here and do super in depth demos and, and bore anybody to tears, but just to give people an idea of what member looks like, the usability, functionality, what you get with with the product, that sort of thing. Um, we'll just have a, a quick a quick jump in. So, what we're looking at here is a uh, is a dummy site, obviously. So we're not sharing any you know, personal data and things like that. Nobody needs to, to worry too much. In terms of navigation, we have all the different sort of key areas of the platform down the left-hand side here. Um, you can navigate to those very, very quickly and easily. For a multi-club company, very, very simple to switch between your gyms. You don't have to log in and log out to, to go to different to those different clubs. I'm seeing all of our clubs here, but imagine this is just two or three or four gyms that you may have you can just navigate between those really really quickly and easily uh we have a, a search bar across the top a, a ticketing system so it goes directly to the support staff we have language options should that be a, a factor um, products in in many different languages should you, should you need it to be translated what we're currently looking at is the dashboard screen so as jack mentioned you know we, we have a lot of experience working with gyms, but also working in gyms. And, and a lot of the team have, have worked in gyms or even owned gyms. And, and we're acutely aware that, particularly in this world, this independent gym space, the owner is probably also the cleaner and the PT and possibly the receptionist. So this dashboard area is designed to give an owner, a manager, that sort of person, a, a, a really quick overview, snapshot, if you want to call it that, of, of the gym and, and what's going on at, at that given time. So they don't have to sit there all day running reports and spreadsheets to, to understand how the gym's running. So we have various bits in here. So you can set KPIs of sales and lost members and, and, a, and a summary of, of a total. We have a graph for, for sales. We, we can have a, a little look at bookings for that day and, and you know people that are booked onto those. We have a, a reception widget. So coming back to that access question, if people are scanning in and, and, and that sort of thing in the club, you have visibility over that. Again, Jack mentioned that a lot of what we do is, is health and fitness related. So there is plenty of information here about interactions with the app. So when members are logging workouts and health stats. So if you have personal trainers in the gym who are assigned to members, they can keep a track of what their members are doing in terms of 
you know, workouts that they're performing and stats that they're logging. And then we have some bits across the bottom around staff shifts and your top classes is a, is a nice one I like to see. Gives you a really quick and clear view of your, your most popular classes and you can start to, you know, make some decisions around decisions around that. And then we have a prospecting widget as well. So prospecting is a, is a big area of the platform, which I'll quickly show you. Um, again, coming back to my original point, you know, in, in the independent gym space, people might not have massive sales teams and, and dedicated staff to, to run their sales processes. So we try and put in as much automation and, and ease of use here as, as humanly possible. So we can integrate forms into the, the customer's website, for example, where people will fill in said form. They will come into this area as a prospect. And then we can kick in, for example, the prospect pathways feature, uh, automated emails that get sent out at set intervals, set this up on day one, this then essentially can run your sales process, for want of a better word, for you. Couple that with being able to manage prospects quite manually and quite hands-on. So, for example, going into a prospect, categorizing them as hot and cold, seeing previous interactions, logging tasks, that sort of stuff. All of this can, can help the, the gyms to, to, to run that sales process more efficiently. Just a quick look at the bookings calendar because obviously a lot of gyms will be offering classes. Really nice and simple, easy to use bookings calendar, dragging over classes from the right-hand navigation and then inputting the, the detail. I won't go through all that and bore everybody, but super easy to do. Automated waiting lists, that sort of thing. Again, touching on the training piece, we have a lot of training within the platform, including an on-demand video section where you can upload YouTube videos, for example, and members can consume those in the app and, and do those at their leisure, whether it's a, a home workout or, or an in-gym workout or even uh, nutritional advice, for example. We have a, an inbuilt exercise library which members can use to build workouts and perform or PTs can use to create workouts and send to members. Here is where you can view those and people can request workouts from their trainer or consume sort of gym level, we call it, sort of overarching workouts. And then step above that, programming. So you can really run uh, the, the sort of the, the entire training side of the business through here, really. Um, there's plenty, plenty to go at. We, of course, have uh, very in-depth reporting functionality. So we have a, a report builder where you can bespoke your own reports and, and, and gather the information you wish. And we have pre-built reports. So you just, with a couple of clicks, can download the data that you need. Um, nice, and, nice and simple to use. Again, we're aware that people don't have the time to be, you know, trawling through data and reports all day. So we make it as, as quick and easy as possible. Um, on the reception area, possibly we can we can see a few different bits here. If any if any problems with somebody's account when they try and come in, that you'll be notified of that. And lastly, we'll just quickly show you a member's profile, just so we have a bit of an idea of some information that you can see. So you can see packages and sign up dates and expiration dates and payment history and access history history of emails we have a, a risk algorithm in the system which is looking at when people are likely to cancel and you can filter your database to view okay i've got 200 members but 30 of them may cancel any moment what do i want to do about that do i want to use my my prospecting and my, my my mass emails to to get some comms out there to get people back in the club just things that we can help gym owners to to make some better informed decisions really uh, and touching here on a, an automated referral system as well, we have inbuilt within the platform, which you can use to um, to really generate signups with 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 not all that much effort. We've seen big increases in in membership numbers on the back of that. Again, there's there's plenty in here. That there's lots to to go at. If anybody wants more information, don't hesitate to to reach out. Always happy to help or just have a an informal chat about what what we can do we've not touched on various things like sms which is in here wider arching email functionality that we have of course um th th there's lots to go at but I'm, I'm conscious of keeping this short short and sweet and 
and letting people get on with their day. Rob, did you have some questions you wanted to ask, mate? Or? Yeah, just let's go with a few down again. Um, I think my camera's on now, so uh, should turn that. Um, sort of the dog out. Yeah, so the dog is on the window still. So he's, um, he's happy, usual, usual place. Oh, yeah. um, the bit that stood out, that referrals thing. So I'll go back to my membership days. The fact that it's a conscious piece within the software. How does that how does that work? Is it is it a recording mechanism or what's the um I'm really the, sorry, mate, you, you cut off. I'll, you, I'll, answer, I'll answer it, Marcus. So yeah, so it, the, every every member who signs up has their unique referral code, and then you can set up packages. Um, that are sort of referral offers. So it might be half price joining fee or, or whatever. So I send my link out to you. You click on that link and join. You then get an offer, but it also then logs it against against my name as well. So if you want, you can just make the reward whatever you want it to be, given the T-shirt or whatever, or you can also make it automatically skip the next payment. So you can market the fact that pass your referral code out, you get a free, you get a free month, uh, and it kind of just grows, um, grows virally from there. Um, they can do that within the app. They can see the referral code within the app, and we're also just building some functionality in the app to make it make it even easier to share it a little bit, like when you kind of you natively share things within um, Booking.com or anything like that. So make it as easy as possible to get people to get their codes out, and then anyone that clicks and joins on it, that member could get rewarded. Nice, nice. I think if, when it's a free month, I think there's such a members who almost get bought into that, and it's pure it's pure money. So if they can save yeah. themselves 20, 30, 40 quid just by getting a friend to join. Totally, yeah. totally, and it's, it's the instant gratification of the world that we live in at the moment. They get an email straight away telling them the next month's going to be month's going to be going to be free. So yeah, it's it's been hugely successful that particularly in the kind of like I say the local sector where you've got minimal staffing and you're you're reliant on kind of automation and digital marketing wherever wherever you can. Yeah, it's them to do the work for you as well, isn't it? So until you have to constantly right. chase people, they can do the chasing for you. You almost end up totally. with a sales team, a two hundred member sales team going out doing the totally. job for you. Yeah, it would be amazing. <laughs> amazing. Um, you touched on membership communications on there as well, I think. Um, something we can hear all the time is just automations, and I don't really know what people want to automate with, but obviously there's things out there like MailChimp and all that sort of stuff. Do you, would you automate with those platforms or would you have the functionality in-house? A bit of, bit of both. So we are we are currently integrating into some of those platforms because I think we're, you can't be everything to everyone. And I think the digital marketing and kind of marketing automation tools are and move forward at a serious pace over the last few years. Um, so we will have uh, some integrations, and then we are we have a, an automation an automation part of our product at the moment. So you can go on different pathways based on prospecting, say um, once you join, what your package is, etc. Like um, and then we're also building out a product at the moment called MComs, which will be our our uh, initially SMS platform, but then automated communication platform from there. So hopefully something on that kind of later later in the year, early next year. Nice, nice. I think the easier it is to communicate with members and prospects. So it's about automating what can be automated so that staff can spend the time on the gym floor rather than sitting there drowning and drowning in admin, particularly for, for your your uh, your gyms. Yeah, great. So then the last question really, which is probably just an I suppose just a normal one. In terms of payment providers and that sort of thing, who do, who do you work with or who do you partner with in terms of membership payments? Yes, yeah, so I main partner at the moment in the UK. Uh, which is obviously the relevant one for, for this is, is Stripe. So um, we uh, we have a relationship with Stripe where you can purchase that through us or through them directly, plug in your direct debits and, and credit card payments in, directly into member. So it can all be managed through member, um, but in the background, the payments are being powered by Stripe. Nice. I think Stripe's becoming Stripe and Go Card are the two big names, aren't they? I suppose in, in yeah, the world definitely. independence. I think the classic direct debits. We hear I won't mention names, but there's a couple of companies out there that aren't too popular with our members um yes yeah. so it's uh yeah i think stripe and go class is the way forward so that's, that's good to hear. So, totally i think that you know kind of the ultimately the functionality you want to make sure stays with members so the experience for the gym owner stays with member you, you can manage everything from from there you're not having to go off to multiple platforms um but using someone like stripe or go carless gives you that um that kind of the global infrastructure of a, of a huge organization sitting in the back in the background which you can't you can't get payments wrong so Making sure you pick the right payments partners, both as an operator and as a as a software provider, as, as a commercially as a partner mm. in a partnership, is is critical. Yeah, I agree. I keep saying to everyone that speaks with whenever the membership software question comes up, it's um, 
it's, it's so emotive because it's so close to the money of the business. It's literally the prime income of the business is all handled through what you guys do and what the payment companies do. So uh, there's, totally. there's pressures on for you guys to, to keep doing it right. So uh, totally. Yeah. Being just a fitness <laughs> app would have been the easy route forward. Probably should have stayed doing that in 2012. Yeah, stick with PT. Stick with there we go. Cool. That was that's all the questions I had. I think we've covered everything off the top of my head. Unless there's anything for you guys that you wanted to to add in, any last minute bits? No, just as Marcus said, by all means, just reach out to either us on, on, on LinkedIn or via the website. We're keen to keen to have a chat with any of you, any yeah. of your members and support in any way that we that we can. Like I said, not not all software is equal. Depending on the type of operator that you are, the, the, the software that you'll buy will be. Um, will be very very different in terms of the, the success. So I think from your perspective, Rob, it's great for multiple partners. You could have, you, you need them, and from our operator's perspective, I think it's just making sure you you, you pick the right software for the type of gym that you're running, um, mm. not just the one that's got the best marketing campaigns or, or sexiest website. So, yeah, we're keen to have a chat help wherever we can. Um, even if that in some instances is probably explaining we're not the right partner, we we, we now ask them like, um, not trying to be everything to everyone, but we will help wherever we can. Fantastic. And then to, just last bit, you guys are going to be joining us at the summer conference on the 5th of July. So um, it's, it's only six weeks today, six weeks today and we're there. So um, there we go. if anybody's watching and they haven't bought their tickets yet or reserved their tickets, jump on and grab them. But um, come and see the guy, come and see Marcus and Jack at the summer conference in Solihull. And um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you there. Awesome. Thanks very much for having us. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, man. Bye.